Hi, welcome to case of the day, yet another Wednesday and um, the 86th case, the three density sign and the bronchiolocentric interstitial pneumonia or the BIP pattern. So this is a 56-year-old known to have hypersensitivity pneumonitis, came for a follow-up scan. There was no significant change from the previous studies. And using that new Osirix tool to make videos, you can see these ill-defined centrilobular nodules. There is an axial peribronchovascular distribution pattern, triple density sign here and air reticular opacities, areas of traction, bronchiectasis, and I can run through that again. And there's no significant um, craniocaudal distribution. I mean, there's reasonably equal involvement in the upper, mid, and the lower zones. And we can see the three density sign here. There's lucent areas. This is a little increased. I mean, the earlier idea was to say normal lung and you could call this perhaps normal lung but just slightly increased density and then this is more the increased density so that's the three density sign and the three density sign was earlier called the head cheese sign is a useful sign pointing towards a hypersensitivity pneumonitis pattern which is now called the bronchiolocentric interstitial pneumonia or the BIP pattern. The initial sign was called the head cheese sign. It has nothing to do with cheese. It's basically a head of uh, meat where you have different parts of the same animal um, that are present in this uh, loaf of meat and it looks so heterogeneous and so that was the sign used to describe it. And then when the 2020 guidelines came out, this changed to the three density sign and now the guidelines that came out last week tell us that this is one of the signs that helps us um, uh, name or label the BIP pattern. So if you look at this patient, we have the um, axial or what we would say is the airway centered disease pattern. There are ill-defined centrilobular nodules, no re real cordocranial uh, predominance, you have reticular opacities, traction bronchiectasis, and you have the three density sign. And this constitutes the fibrotic BIP pattern. BIP may also be non-fibrotic. And if you look at the unified approach, then we're going to, in this case, say that yes, there are real lesions, it is an ILD, it is fibrotic, it is non-UIP, and, and it fits into the BIP pattern. Why the new term? If you remember case 54 that I, that I talked about, where I said, based on this paper, that when we see an HP pattern, it doesn't mean that it's HP, the clinical condition, because the HP pattern and seen in green here can occur with so many connective tissue diseases, but it can also occur um, as, uh, you know, re uh, following... Um, a drug-induced lung injury, and I talked about that in one of the other posts on bleomycin. And so I said we should report fibrotic HP as a pattern and not a disease. But it is confusing since fibrotic HP as a pattern and fibrotic HP is also a clinical diagnosis. This can all get very confusing. And so the new guidelines propose that we use the term bronchiolocentric interstitial pneumonia, BIP for the pattern, and HP for the clinical condition <coughs> and the a multidisciplinary diagnosis, etc. So you need to split the two and hence the term BIP. And I've started using this in my reports uh, s since Monday. And I would urge everyone to do that as well. And all of this I'm going to be discussing in the course that starts Sunday. But, you know, you have until um, mid-September to register. Um, that's the WhatsApp channel. And thank you so much for viewing this.